the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. So first of all, there it is again, teaching the gospel in Yeshua's way. And the fact is, I'm going to keep that in my title all the time. It is written. All right. And it is written, called to preach the gospel. That's written. And I'll show it to you. Not called to judge other people. That's written. So why did, how did the church, how did ministry move into the path of judgment, judging people? And you know you turn people off. You know you're running people away from the church. You don't need to do that. Let's let's focus on the thing that's right. And like I said, Romans 14, 12. So every one of us need to give an account, will give, shall give an account to of himself to God. So while you're sitting there judging other people, you're forgetting the fact is that you're gonna be judged yourself. That's what's written. We'll go with that in a few minutes. All right. First of all, with the Lord's Prayer. You know, in Matthew 6, chapter 6, starting at verse 9, Christ taught his disciples, Christ taught all of us how to pray. Many of us try to figure out, some people don't pray, and then you know, ask me, would you pray? You know, I ain't going to pray. <laughs> would you come to church? No, I can't come to church because I'm a sinner. <laughs> but he taught us how to pray. And many of us don't know how to pray. And, and, and I think... Using the foundation of the Lord's Prayer is a way of teaching you to pray. Amen. So he said, after this manner, devil pray. You mean this is not uh, verbatim, but it's a manner in which you should approach your Creator, your Father in heaven. It says that our, our Father is in heaven. When you do that, Christ is telling you to remind yourself that you are a child of God. That's what that means by calling him your father. That means a personal relationship between you and the father, which are in heaven, meaning we make it sure that we're not praying to a political party, praying, praying to a ministry, praying to people, praying to things. We're praying to the father in heaven. Amen. Hallowed be that name it is to recognize his awesome power. He's creator. That's who you pray to, God, the creator. That's who you pray to. You get deep all you want. You can find all the things that you think you can find to, 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 to change that fact. But you know what? It is written. We pray this way as a, as a guide. We pray to the Father in heaven. Because if you pray and you pray to somebody, it should be God the Father in heaven. Hallowed be that name is to recognize his awesome and you referencing him. Of thy kingdom come, the fact is that he has a system in place, a system which is based on what's written in the word of God, a system that we, he told us to be part of. Uh, and the fact is that that kingdom has a king and the king is God the Father in heaven. Listen to this piece right here. This is critical for every saint. And that's why he gives it to us and taught people how to pray is that thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Not just a sweet by and by, but in earth. His will. Where is his will? His will is his word. That's why we want you to understand, study the Word of God for yourself, address situations based on what is the Word of God. Thy will be done. Thy Word will be done. That's where you got to watch out people who try to take you from the Word because they know that if they can get you off the Word, then they can get you into focusing on the things of the flesh, things that are demonic in nature instead of focus on what is written i want you to feel comfortable that his will which is his written word that's what you need to change his will to say thy written word will be done in earth as it is in heaven my life shall be applied based on what's written not based on the opinions of other people and not based on the fact is of me trying to find fault in other people what i need to deal with myself the Bible said to work out your own salvation. That's what the Bible said. That's what's written. Give us this day. I love that because the fact is that when we blow it, when we miss it, 
yesterday. We got a brand new day to start all over again. So let's go by this day. Tomorrow is not promised, but the day, the day, sufficient the day is the eve thereof. We want to get the daily bread today, which again is the written word of God. You want to give me this day the written word of God. That's what that's saying. Our daily bread is our spiritual food, which feeds our spirit man. Needs to be fed daily. Amen. So let's get a daily bread, daily dose of the word of God. Look at that. And forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. You want to be forgiven and if you want to be forgiven then you must forgive other people it doesn't tell those people that they are not going to be accountable for their actions all it does mean is that i forgive you just remember when christ was on the cross he said father forgive them for they know not what they do in a lot of cases, if we knew, you understand, if we knew what the, the, the consequences of our actions, a lot of cases, a lot of cases, people will not do it. But people get wrapped up <laughs> into the world we're thinking and do things the world's way. And, and, and therefore, they make mistakes based on that. And what we're saying is, forgive somebody because they probably, and, and, and I'm saying in the sense that they knew what they was doing, they wouldn't do it. Some of y'all said, I said, no, I'm not going to forgive them because they knew what they was doing. I mean, in the world's way, they did do it wrong. But God is saying it is to do it, forgive them so that you can be forgiven. Because the same way, because the point is that just like their mistakes, have you made mistakes? And if you have made mistakes, do you want to be forgiven for your mistakes? Yes. And if you want to be forgiven for your mistakes, then you also want to forgive other people by their mistakes. Hey, good brother. How you doing? He's coming. He got his background. That's Brother Addison uh, coming up. At least, at least his picture is up. And, and I know he's not muted, but I can't hear him. <laughs> and I can't see him. <laughs> but anyway, I'm gonna keep going. You catch up, you catch up, bro. The, the, the point I'm saying is that you want to be forgiven, then you forgive other people the same way you want to be forgiven. That That's just part of the gospel. That's just part of how life is, right? And then lead us not into temptation. What we want to do is, if nothing else, because you will be led uh, or you will be tested. Life is going to give you tests. Every day you will get some type of test. What you want to do is have the Lord let tests come your way that you can pass. And how do you pass? And I talked about it last week. It's an open book test. Compare the situation. Compare the temptation with the word of God. For example, the most common, because the Bible said there's no temptation such as that which is common to man. So therefore we got a common test and we got common basic answers to those tests. So what what was a good example would be uh, adultery, right? It is written, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. It is written, thou shalt not kill. It is written in 1 John that he who hates his brother is a murderer, and no murderer has eternal life in him. So therefore, you do not hate your brother because it is written. Not because you don't feel like it. Not because you don't think it's a good idea. <laughs> you do it because you want eternal life. Just like the rich man, just like us, all of us. <clears throat> we want eternal life. If you want eternal life, don't hate your brother. Don't hate your sister. Just don't forgive them because the Bible said to forgive them. And don't hate them because the Bible said don't 
hate them because it's written, right? It, that's how you should approach things. If, if somebody said, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, that is written. So let's focus on what's written. And what's written in this particular case, in the scripture we're talking about is Matthew 6, 12, is to forgive others their debts as you want to forgive, be forgiven. That is a traditional, that is a doctrinal position of God. And I guarantee you, many who did the Crusades, many who did the Spanish Inquisition, many who did the, uh, all the other atrocities of life all the way up to 2023 did those things based on forgiveness based on the fact that they feel that a person be treated that way because of the color of the skin because of the economic situations and the bible says in 12 forgive us our debts as we forgive our debt towards you wouldn't be doing the thing that you're doing to people if you understand that you must forgive them. In a lot of cases, one of the biggest ones I see is rid thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. And if you sit there, most people hate other people based on ethnic groups, based on their color of skin, based on the lies you talked about them, based on the color of their skin. He's sitting there saying is, you not supposed to bear false witness. And if you hear false witness, you're not supposed to attack those people. You're supposed to forgive them because he said in verse 12, forgive us our debts and we forgive our debt towards. If you're not forgiving people the debt, then you're not being forgiven yourself. That's what the scripture says. Uh, it says, Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Because you're going to be tested out. I already told you that. But they'd be delivered from evil, being delivered from destruction. The Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Christ, that's what's written. But Christ come to give life and life more abundantly. So we want to be delivered from evil. And that's not a bad thing to do in the Lord's Prayer. For thine is the kingdom. He wrap it up again, saying that the kingdom of God does not come by observation, for the kingdom of God is within you, which lines up with the scripture that said it is written, Greater is he that is in you than he is in the world. So you want to have the kingdom in your life. Thine is the kingdom and the power. You want to have the power of God in your life. Amen. That's critical. His power. A lot of people sit there focus on political power, economic power. All those are diminishing powers. So you want to have the power of God in your life. And you want to have the glory of God in your life because it is the glory of God that matters. Amen. And then he said there and says, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. You don't want to sit there and put all your money, all your basket into the glory of the things in this world opposed to the glory of the things of God. That's why you want to have God in your life. That's why you want to glorify him. Hey, brother, can you hear me? Yeah. Amen. So, so as I was wrapping up the Lord's Prayer piece, you know, I always do that first anyway and then we got that great topic i want to talk to you about <laughs> the, the point is to, to for people as we wrap it up we talk about the fact is that it's god's glory you don't want the vain glory of trying to glorify yourself trying to glorify your flesh trying to glorify your political party trying to glorify stupidity you want to glorify god and let him glorify you that's the main glory because that's eternal glory. And he says, forever we're going to do that. We're going to give his kingdom, his power, his glory forever. And, and, and if you, you want to give the devil power, then you go ahead. You got, he got a place for you, hell, and then there's a lake of fire for you. You go with that. That's what you want. But I'm telling you, is I'd rather go with his power, his glory, his kingdom forever. Amen. And then the fact is, in 14, he says, if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Listen to what the scripture says. That's why we talked about verse 12. Forgive us of our debts and forgive our debt towards. He, this is so important that he reiterate that after he taught them how to pray. Because he said in 15, but if you forgive men not their trespasses, neither would your Father forgive your trespasses. So you want to be forgiven so you can be forgiven. 
right? Give and it shall be given, shall be given, pressed down, shaking together, running over to men giving you bosom. You want men to forgive you because you want to be forgiven and you want to forgive them as well. And then I put down these scriptures here. I want to keep these on my slide that I use the, uh, the Lord's Prayer is that in 1 Timothy 2, 4, who will help all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. And that's why we want to teach the Word of God, using the Word of God and discussing the Word of God in this platform, because you need to come to the knowledge of the truth. There's too many junk, too many things that takes people off from the Word of God and focus on something outside of that his will for all men to be saved and we talk about the fact is that the title once we get to it is to go preach the gospel why so that all men can have an opportunity to be saved will all men receive salvation the bible said no but the bible is saying is that we're supposed to go and preach the gospel so that everyone can hear the gospel and receive Christ. Final piece on this, on this slide here that we'll go over, and then we'll go into the topic, is Romans 14, 12. Why you shouldn't judge for other people is the fact is that so every one of us shall give an account of himself, God bless you, to God, himself, to God. All of us, while we're sitting there, those of you who've been taught to judge, those who are taught to condemn, those who are taught to do bad things to other people, those who are taught to hate, you got to understand you will give an, an account to God. You, every last one of us. So don't sit there and sit there and think that you're going to go before God. And I, we talked about it last week, even Brother Asher talked about it last week. Some of the people who want to sit there and take things out of history book because it makes them feel bad. You need to understand if it make them, if you make your children feel bad, what well, do you think God is thinking? Do you think that God is going to, do you think those people who did bad things won't give an account to God? Yes, they will. And if you've been taught to do the same thing, you will give an account to God. You, I know some people don't want to believe in God because they don't want to be accountable to God. They'd rather be accountable to man. They'd rather be accountable to your political party. They'd rather be accountable to uh, ministry. But all of us, this is what the scripture says. Verse Romans 14, 12, so then every one of us, that's every one of us, it is written, every one of us shall give account of himself to God. So you want to sit there, and I'm to, the reason I bring this up is because these political topics and the political divide, we're sitting there doing bad things, endorsing bad behavior, looking for bad <laughs> savior I mean and I call savior is that some people choosing a form even a former president as being ordained by God because you want to hear that and yet the Bible said that a tree is known by his fruit and all of you that want to keep and maintain a status you gotta understand you're gonna have to give an account to God and your children have to give an account to God. Not for what has happened in the past, for those people who did bad things, you, you, because of what you taught them and how they will behave themselves in life. They will give an account to God, amen? All right, that's the uh, topic. I mean, that's the Lord's Prayer we want to do for each of the subjects. But for Brother Addison, the topic today is because it, it keeps, I guess because I keep seeing it and it's seen in traditional churches over and over again. Uh, and I added to when I said teaching the gospel Yeshua's way, which is Jesus. That's the transliteration. The actual Hebrew name is Yeshua. How he dealt with life. And that's what we're going to, I'm going to leave that part of my topic. topic is it is written. How do you approach life based on what is written? Instead of sitting there, deflecting and looking at other people, you're supposed to go by what's written. That's the Christian walk, is to go by what is written. I'm talking about the New Testament, and you also look at the Old Testament as well, because the New Testament reflects back to the Old Testament uh, in most cases. But the teaching of Christ is what's written. 
that's what you have to work on. And you're not called to judge others. Because it's written, judge, you shall judge not, you shall not be judged. <laughs> Condemn not, you shall not be condemned. But that's what is written. So that's what we want to talk about because Brother Addison, the 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 thing I'm sitting there, I, I sat there and heard some some Yahoo that says that uh they, you know, I don't know if you look, I guess you look at the news like everybody else to a degree. They're talking about the uh, somebody actually in the rally that uh, a former president had. The the guy said that the person prosecutors should be arrested. Uh, and you actually sit there and say, okay, you don't tell them to get arrested when they're prosecuting other people. You know, like if you, me, or themselves, mm. if they 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 charge with a crime or being investigated for a crime, they don't ask for nobody to get arrested for doing that. But they, they're going to sit there and say, well, this person should be arrested because they shouldn't be investigating somebody who obviously or potentially committed a crime. And, they, and it's like, what, what world are you on? What planet are you on? You know, there's somebody sitting there and say, well, no other president has ever been uh, pursued like this. Well, no other president did the thing that the man did. How is you going to sit there and, and create a precedence of, well, you know, we don't go after former presidents. If you don't, former, most former presidents don't do what that person did. So you can't sit there and, and, and you, it's like you're in a different world. You want to be in a different world. He wanted to lock up Hillary, <laughs> but you don't want to lock up somebody else that did crime. Uh, it's, 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 I, I just find it, and then we talk about the Jim Crow law, the crusade itself, Brother Addison. The, the atrocity, I think you read the history a little bit about the crusade and how they killed people. They were vicious. It was all about killing and all about trying to say, we, we're going to go, check this out. We're going to go ahead and, and usher in the kingdom of God. We're going to sit there and take Jerusalem by force because we're helping God. But you're not called. Do, do, do you remember anything in the New Testament that was called to go and take up an army and, 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 and take something like Jerusalem? No. No, and, you know the Third Reich, the German, uh, in Germany, World War Two, they, they, this, this Third Reich just ushered in God. We're gonna do this. We're gonna have, we're gonna have the endorsement of God to, to kill all the Jews, <laughs> all the Jewish people. I guess is that kill all the Jewish people uh, because their excuse, their excuse was what the kid to, to usher in the Third Reich. Right, I yeah, think but, right. but to kill the Jews, they had an excuse. They got to make up an excuse. Yeah, to do that. Yeah, there, there's no truth in it. It's no. always to to kill another man <laughs> and to justify yourself. You can only justify it with a lie. Exactly. Exactly. Same thing with the slave trade. Same thing people. with it. Yeah. I mean, in other words, people it have gone from the commission that they're supposed to do. Because the Bible tells you it's a, it's a clear commission. Go preach the gospel. What's the gospel mean? Good news. Not you killing somebody. The, the slave trade, same thing. Remember we talk about Nicholas. You talk, we talk about Nicholas V. Hey, go, and, go get these people because they don't have the grace of God on them. Like, like where's that written? Yeah. Well, the time for, for, for killing off a sinful uh, people, that dispensation has passed. Big time. That you dispensation know. has passed. And, and, and the problem is that the children of God actually disobey God again. Again, again, mm -hmm. that 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 vicious cycle, 
And so in that disobedience, a sinful nature was increased. I mean, yes. it can be increased. I, mean, I just can't imagine. But yeah. the, the problem was that the heart of man mm. got to a point. Well, well, let me change that. The hearts of the people, of the children of the hearts of the children of God mm. got to a place where they were so corrupt. Yes. That they the lust of, of, of their sins, uh -huh. of their flesh, and their willingness to, to save their lives began to serve pagan gods. Yes. They began to adapt pagan rituals and, and pagan lifestyles mm -hmm. into them and, and, and to what they were supposed to be doing as far as following the, the commandments of God. Yeah. And therefore, this uh, hybrid form of godliness started to exist. Yeah. And in that became a corruption to the point to where now the only thing that's going to change that situation and circumstance is Yeshua Hamashiach. Yes, sir. <laughs> the only thing that's going to change that. Yeah. Yeah, it's so amazing. Now, now, you know, you, you hear about the dark years and, <laughs> and the yeah. silent years and all yeah. this other stuff. Yeah. It was like, you know, well, this, this dispensation has to fulfill itself and come to an end. Mm. And then in the fullness of time, come on now. <laughs> then my son shall come. Yeah. My word shall come. Uh, uh, grace will come. Grace will come. And then restoration. Yes. But only through the original laws being fulfilled come on now will the new dispensation come will i take charge again <laughs> and give the power that was given before yes to actually be victorious and dominate in this world and in this world system Again, we have to re realize that we're in this world and we're not of this world. Of this world. Because this world system is corrupt. It was corrupt, it is corrupt, and it will be corrupt. Yes. Until our Lord and Savior returns, till our King returns. So, the way this world is set up, It has always been to gain power. There's all, it's, it's all it's about. It's about power, authority, mm -hmm. and money. And those are the same things that was offered to our Lord and Savior. We when did. He was Ex tempted. The exactly. same thing. The same only thing. difference is these people accept them. I know it. And, 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 so, and, and lie about it, too. Yeah. yeah. And so by any means necessary, they're going to protect that because it's all they have. Yeah. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you.